Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 25th November 2023. So today is Saturday, so there is no text and context and also there is no opinion page. And what are the articles that appeared in our editorial page? Already we discussed from last one week. So we are not going to focus much on that. So we are going to conclude today's Hindi analysis with a less time so that you will be getting much time to spend in your GS preparation. Okay. So first of all, I am going to take PDF of Hindu of the Delhi edition and later on we are going to see the perspectives and after that we are going to see the notes of this today's class and if you want to download the notes, so join the telegram channel, the link is given in description box or else open telegram and in the search box type Rathod's IS classes then you can join the class so that we will be uploading the notes there in the telegram channel and if there is any important update so we are going to post update there so here the first topic it is about battle of ballots in desert state today so this article says that yes we are going to have elections in Rajasthan <coughs> and if you are from Rajasthan state you have to see like what is the polling booth and who is the polling officer and that point is important from your polity and next topic is Afghanistan embassy in Delhi sheds down so this article is very important because it is talking about India Afghanistan relations so this topic is talking about India Afghanistan relations right so here especially you have to focus on especially here you have to focus on so why okay why the shutdown of this Afghanistan embassy happened so what is the issue between India and Afghanistan so as you all know that in Afghanistan who is in the power so in Afghanistan who is in the power so in Afghanistan Taliban's so Taliban's came into power in Afghanistan right so here there is an issue which is going on between India and Afghanistan and now there is a close of this Afghanistan embassy which happened in India so here you have to see what will be the impact on future India Afghanistan relations and next topic is Odisha revokes not for transfer of tribals land to non-tribals so this article which is talking about forest rights act so even in yesterday's lecture we discussed about this forest rights act right so now we are going to see this topic in detail and especially students who are from anthropology background so this article is very important okay so this article is very important so this topic is important from gs paper to under governance point of view okay if you are talking about this forest rights act it is important from your polity point of view so we are going to see all these dimensions in a very great detail so this is about front page and next page is city page so there is an article that is air quality worsens likely to improve slightly after sunday so here we have to focus on this aiq that is air quality index so actually this article says that the air quality or the pollution level is very much high in Delhi that is around 40 times more compared to the top of this double H4 permissible limit. So this is the thing which said by Delhi Pollution Control Committee that is DPCCC data. So here you have to know about what is the source of pollution there you have to focus on point sources and non point sources and what will be the impact of air pollution okay and apart from that you can also focus on what is this air quality index so which are the eight pollutants they will be taken into consideration in this air quality index so all these things you have to see and you have to let me know which are those 8 pollutants that will be taken into consideration under this AIQ. Is that clear?
And if you move on, in the states page, there is nothing much important. So here, here you can see one article that is about ISRO to conduct 60th PSLV flight by end of this December. So by end of this year, here ISRO is going to launch 60th PSLV mission. So this mission, it is about one important thing. Okay, so that is okay here you have to focus on what is the 60th PSLV launch and why this PSLV is called as work horse of ISRO so all these things are very important and even you have to see this mission exposat so what is exposat so you can get a question regarding this exposat okay so that is very important And in this editorial page, you can see this article is about climate smart agriculture. So here you have to understand what is this concept called as climate smart agriculture. And apart from that, you have to see what are the advantages and what all are the techniques that you are following in this climate smart agriculture. So this topic is at most important from your environment and ecology. And we are going to see this topic in detail. And next topic it is about Supreme Court decision on power of governor. So we discussed right. So we discussed about this topic in a very great detail. So it is issue in state of Punjab, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So this is issues in states like Punjab, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So actually Punjab government filed petition Supreme Court. Even Tamil Nadu government also filed petition in Supreme Court. So actually article 200 of our Indian constitution says about powers of governor whenever he is getting the bill for assent. But the same article and even article 201 which is not talking about what is the power of governor in repassing of the bill. Okay so at that time Supreme Court said that whenever state legislative assembly which passed or repassed the bill. So whenever state legislative assembly repassed the bill. Okay with or without amendments of withholding the bill. Then that bill will be acting as a money bill. So in money bill there is very less power for governor. Governor have no choice but governor. He need to give assent. So this thing which is said by Supreme Court in the recent case of Tamil Nadu. So that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So already we discussed that topic number of times. And next topic it is about rise in flu cases in China is due to increased surveillance. So at, actually what happened, so in yesterday's class we discussed that in northern China. In northern China, there is increased incidence. In northern China, there is increased incidence of pneumonia. In northern China, there is increased incidence of pneumonia cases. So in that context, we discussed about what is this pneumonia. So what are the signs and symptoms? And what is the cause to organism like bacteria, fungi and as well as a virus etc. So anything that can cause pneumonia. And this pneumonia it is very dreadful. Respiratory disease. <coughs> it is dreadful respiratory disease. <coughs> and now let us move on. And in this news page, you can see the articles which are important like center exams cert in from purview of RTI Act. So actually in our governance system, I will tell you a story. Okay. So in our governance system to ensure accountability and transparency, A and T, we enacted right to information RTI Act in 2005. So under this RTI Act, if the people they need to get information, they can file RTI and they can get information. 
but there are some exemptions right so if there is any information which is causing threat to the sovereignty and security of country and that information was not given so like that now one more exemption which is added to this purview of rti act is now the details under the certain they will be also not given so what is a certain certain is nothing but computer emergency computer emergency response team so it is nothing but computer emergency response team that is certain so this certain is very important because it is giving the data okay it is a national nodal agency for responding computer computer security incidents that means it is very important for controlling cyber security and to deal with the cyber security issues this certain is very important and now this certain is also one of the example or exemption under this rti act so if you file the case or if you file the rti regarding i need the information regarding the certain so they are not going to give <coughs> and leave this assembly poll speech and here you can see articles like generic drugs for four rare diseases made available in india okay so we are going to get the disease, uh, generic medicines for four rare diseases and we have to see that which are those rare diseases so what is the meaning of rare disease so rare disease it is a health condition of particularly low prevalence that affects very small number of people okay for example it uh, it will cause, it will be occurred around 6% of total population or 8% of total population right so those rare diseases are like phenyl ketonuria and hyperammonemia so these are the two important rare diseases so for this yes we have some drugs to treat those rare diseases and if you're talking about the problem of this rare disease here is so it is occurring very rarely <coughs> so because of this pharmaceutical companies they will be not showing any interest to develop the drugs to treat this rare disease because most of the private institutions they have profit motive they want profit so if they are uh, if they are uh, manufacturing this drugs for this rare disease so the uh, people who are consuming this will be very very low so because of this it may cause losses to the pharmaceutical companies so because of this they will be not focusing on this rare diseases and people who are suffering from this rare disease they will be going into the much suffer because the non availability of drugs in the market and next topic is india european union sign pact to build semiconductor supply chain yes this article is very important because semiconductors are very much important in our electronic sector automobiles etc so without that we didn't we won't go for the manufacturing of electronics so even if you're talking about the semiconductor manufacturing in india government is providing production linker incentive scheme for this semiconductors but even though we are depending on the other country imports for the semiconductors and now recently here european union and india they signed memorandum of understanding so which will be helpful for building robust supply chain and even that will helps to support innovation so all these things are very important and even you have to see map of european union where it is located and which are the countries part of this european union and in this world page there is nothing much important and in this business page you can see like India set to be set to miss disinvestment targets by half of this fiscal year. So here we have to focus on what is this disinvestment. So what is the meaning of disinvestment? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of this disinvestment? So this is important. Okay. So from your means point of view. So these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. Now let us see the notes part. So first article it is about Afghanistan embassy. 
so we are going to see this topic okay so because of cold weather because of winter season so whenever i am driving in the morning to the recording room <clears throat> because of this my throat is becoming like somewhat sticky and i can't speak properly so please adjust with my voice so if you see context it says that the afghanistan embassy in delhi has permanently closed down so afghanistan embassy has been permanently closed down in delhi so it is effective from 23rd november the mission announced that there is closing of uh, afghanistan embassy okay and file had been closed permanently so if you see the details it says that the embassy blamed both taliban rulers in uh, rulers in kabul and the government of india for pressuring it to stop its operation in country permanently so from the both the side from talibans and from indian government of india side they forced it to stop this <coughs> operation and the embassy had stopped functioning on september 20th uh, 30th onwards when senior afghan diplomats and ambas ambassador representing the government of islamic republic of afghanistan so finally they left india on september 30 and finally we have the complete permanent shutdown of this embassy now mm. unfortunately despite of 8 week wait the objective of visa extension for diplomats and a shift in indian government's conduct they were not realized so what happened here the visa extension of diplomats and there is shift in the government's attitude so because of this that led to the permanent closure of embassy So, if you see details, it says that there is hard in functioning. So, actually, what happened? Senior Afghan diplomats and ambassador, so they left India on September 30 itself. The embassy blamed both Taliban rulers in Kabul and as well as government of India for pressuring it to stop operations in India permanently. And what is the reason for closure? So, the reason for closure here is there is lack of resources. and also taliban's regime failed to meet afghanistan interest so because of this there is failure of embassy and what are the concerns now so the permanent closure of this embassy of afghanistan will create a challenging situation for whom for traders and travelers who want to travel or who want to apply for this afghan visas so they will be having the problem and even there is one more concern like decline in afghan community so there is a significant decline in afghan community in india over past two years which has been attributed to the departure of refugees students and traders so it will be harmful for refugees students and traders if they are facing any problem in afghanistan so this embassy will be helpful right so if there is permanent closure of this embassy means so there will be no one to deal with the problems of this refugee students and as well as traders who are moving so this is about this topic and now let us see next topic it is about odisha revokes not for transfer of tribal land to non tribals so here if you see here tribals they are the people belongs to this scheduled tribes that is nothing but st community and where they will live normally so they will live in the forest areas and they will have some rights okay that rights will be ensured under this forest rights act but now here odisha government want to transfer this tribal land to non tribal lands that means there is discrimination of this tribal people is seen here so now let us try to see this topic in detail and we have to see even what are the laws which are present to protect this tribal people So if you see the context it says that the present government of Odisha announced that it has withdrawn the decision to amend Odisha's scheduled areas transfer of immovable property by scheduled tribes Re- Re- regulation 1956 which would have allowed transfer of tribal land to non tribals so actually here government says that we are withdrawing this act so this act which helpful for transfer of tribal lands to non tribal lands so if you see some details it says that what will be the impact okay so if you see the details of what will be the impact on this tribal landscape and identity so actually if you are talking about the details of uh, tribals in odisha 
so mostly we can see more tribal population is seen in the uh, state of odisha so odisha constitute about 22.85 around 23 percentage of tribal people right and they are facing the challenges of economy and as well as land ownership challenges and this odisha act which safeguards tribal interest but proposed amendment which is going to alter the demographic landscape which is benefiting the non tribal that means tribal land can be transferred to non tribals so even economic disparities is one of the challenges that is faced by this orissa tribal group and if you are talking about what can be done what is the way forward so we have to protect the land rights of the scheduled tribes so recently our government came up with this update in 2019 that ministry of tribal affairs through a press release mentioned constitutional and legal provisions for tribals that have been put in place so far so what are the important laws or important acts that are present or important schemes came up by the government for ensuring of the rights of the scheduled tribes so first one is scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act 2006 so in this act here gram sabha so gram sabha will ensure that rights taken in its assembly or complying with the interest of wild animals forest biodiversity as well as concerning tribals so this act is dealing with the concerns of tribals and next one is we have right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement act so here under this act we have national level monitoring committee and it will be look after rehabilitation resettlement and they will review and monitor the implementation of this schemes and plans whether they are properly implemented or not so whether the people who had been displaced whether they are getting proper rehabilitation or not so that committee will be monitoring and we have no acquisition of land shall be made in scheduled areas okay act which says that acquisition does not take place it shall be done only in a demonstrable last resort that means if there is no alternative then only we can go for displacement and next one is the procedure and manner of rehabilitation resettlement they are laid under this uh, act and even we have scheduled caste and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act of 1989 so these are the laws which are came up by this ministry of tribal affairs to protect the rights of this tribal people so these rights are very very important so please make a note of those and next topic is about pslv 60th mission this article is at most important and this will be the last mission of this year so this article is important from which subject science and technology point of view so if you see context it says that the indian space research organization that is isro ISRO is celebrating 60th anniversary of first sounding rocket launch from the Tumba this week and we are going to preparing for 60th launch of this PSLV okay so in the 60th launch we are going to have in the month of December and this mission we are going to launch exposat or nothing but x-ray polar polarimeter satellite so x ray polarimeter satellite and actually what is this expo sat mission you have to know the details and you, here you can get a question of prelims from this what is this expo sat mission so expo sat mission which is mainly used to study dynamics of bright astronomical x ray sources so we are going to study x ray sources in the space and here it is a india's first and the world second polarimetry mission okay so it is india's first and second in the world polarimetry mission and actually first mission is done by nasa okay nasa imaging x-ray polarimeter explorer that had been done in 2021 and 2023 india is going to launch the 60th mission of pslv so here this mission of nasa so it is going to have some identical telescopes and one lightweight x-ray mirror and one detector unit so because of that detector unit they can detect from where they are getting x-rays and whether they are from neutron stars or supermassive black holes 
and next one is by measuring this polarization of these x-rays so it will be helpful to study where light came from and we can understand geometry and inner working of light source so this is the aim of the study so this article is at most important and next topic is about climate smart agriculture in india so this article is at most important so here what is the meaning of climate smart agriculture so this climate smart agriculture it is a strategy for guiding measures to transition agri food systems towards more environmental friendly climate resilient practices yes we are doing agriculture but this agriculture is more vulnerable to climate change so here even though there is climate change is happening so we should not affect the food security of the country and what are the agriculture that we are doing that should be environmentally sustainable so this concept is called as climate smart agriculture and this climate smart agriculture it strives to achieve three major goals so what are the goals so first and the foremost one here is we have to improve agriculture output and even we have to income income of the farmer should be increased sustainably and we have to adapt to creating resilience to climate change and we have to even decrease greenhouse gas emissions so first one is increase output and income second one is adapting and creating resilience mechanism and third one is decreasing of greenhouse gases so all these things are important aims under this climate smart agriculture so if you're talking about this climate smart agriculture features the first one here is we have climate change adaptation so here we have to focus on resilience of agriculture system and we have to come up with putting off some techniques and practices that will helpful for the crops and even livestock and farmers in adopting changing climate conditions like droughts floods and heat waves so what are the technologies that we have using here so we have to use climate release resilience technology and next one here is sustainable intensification so we have to focus on increasing of agriculture productivity and even we have to focus on decreasing of environmental impact okay so that we can use natural sources like water and nutrients more effectively okay and we can preserve or we can improve ecosystem services as well and third one is ecosystem conservation restoration so here it says that we have to focus on protecting and repairing ecosystem for the long term agriculture viability and even we can encourage biodiversity protection and regeneration of degraded areas okay so in that degraded areas we can go for planting of uh, trees etc so that we can improve ecosystem and this one is we can focus on resilient livelihoods also so this uh, this technology or this smart agriculture it is very much helpful for strengthening of farming community resilience to climate change climate shocks and climate pressures and we can also improve farmers adaptive capacity also so we can also improve farmers adaptive capacity and we have to focus on diversifying the revenue resources and even we can also encourage alternative livelihood opportunities because especially in this agriculture especially in this primary uh, primary sector we are having a problem called as seasonal unemployment like only in some seasons we can get employment but not throughout the year so whenever we are not getting employment so we can go in search of another works and even we can focus on social safety nets and next one is we can also focus on mitigation or decreasing of this greenhouse gas emissions okay from our agricultural activities for example we can increase carbon storage in soils and we can reduce emissions from this animals especially methane will be released and we have to focus on using of animal manure as fertilizer okay such that we can also decrease this nitrogen oxide emissions into atmosphere and this one is we can focus on even information and knowledge management so knowledge is very much important information for example farmers they can rely on early warning systems they will be getting information regarding whether it going to rain or whether it going to have a drought etc 
so that based on that we can improve our ability to make educated decisions and if you're talking about practices so which are the practices that can be done under this climate smart agriculture so first one is we can focus on crop management so rather than going for um, <coughs> only one crop that is monocropping we can go for intercropping so that we can maximize the space and we can also control the pest effectively and we can also going for uh, growing of cash crops crop rotations uh, that will be included so that uh, we can make our soil very much fertile and we can also focus on storage and processing techniques crop diversity underground crops okay so that we can also reduce damage because of wind and we can also go for using of organic fertilizer and mulching of crops shade houses etc and next one is we can also focus on livestock management so we can improve the feeding strategies like rotational grazing and we can grow suitable crops to feed animals for example liana and grillicidia manure treatment etc and even we have to focus on health of this animals also and animal husbandry improvement is very important and next one is soil and water management so conservation of the soil and water it is very much important in agriculture so we can go for minimum tillage or zero tillage for the maintaining of good soil fertility and next one here is agroforestry so boundary trees okay so if there is farm here so around this we can go for planting of trees and wind breaks nitrogen fixing trees on farms and we can also go for growing of multi purpose trees like fruit trees okay for example we can also go for planting of fruit orchards so i think you might be seeing like so if there is any farm so there will be the trees like mango trees or tram tamarind trees they will be there in the farms right so in that way we can go for growing of that agroforestry and this one is integrated food energy systems is also very important like biogas improved stoves solar powers and ramp pumps for irrigation and gravity fed irrigation system so all these that can be focused so these are some methods for this climate smart agriculture and next topic it is about india australia relations so here this article is focusing especially about australia india leadership dialogue aild so this article it is very much important from your international relations especially from your gs paper too so you have to open map and you have to see australia where it is located and which is the important latitude which is passing on and important provinces of this australia so context says that ex affairs minister said that it is a trust between like minded partners so here the both like minded partners here is india and as well as australia so they are focusing on helping some efforts to secure free open peaceful and prosperous indo pacific region and they want to ensure that rule based international order in this indo pacific region so if you see details so these things which are talked in virtual india australia leadership dialogue so what is this dialogue is about so it is a premier forum of informal diplomacy so it is not formal it is informal diplomacy between india and australia and it is structured as a multi stakeholder cross sectoral round table and it involves around 50 delegates like uh, business leaders cabinet ministers government officials and even from academies like institutions civil society so they will be participating and they will be sharing the challenges between india australia relations and even provides an opportunity to deepen mutual understanding between australian and indian leaders and it will also helpful for enhancing of framework for regional security and even to promote business and commercial opportunities and even this type of meeting will helpful to advance people to people links and even to improve economic and cultural prosperity of both indian and australian citizens so in this way here this leadership dialogue is very very important and that's all so these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper and one sincere request from my side here is so please do join this ethics course 
So it had been started on 20th November. So if you have lost the classes, so we are providing the recorded classes. So here we are covering entire ethics within 50 hours of live course. So every day the class will be there from 6 to 8 p.m. and we are dealing with the topics from ground level. So from the basic onwards to advanced level, we are teaching the classes and we are focusing on especially example and that class will be mostly interactive session. So it is not like I am only shouting in the class. We are also taking the inputs from you. And we are also focusing on how to write the case study. In yesterday's class, we discussed about how to write the case study. And many students, they got like, yes, ma'am, in this way, we can write case study. And nowhere I studied this. So, I got a very good response from the students. So, don't miss that opportunity. So, try to join this course. And if you want to join this course, so please contact me on this number. Like 8074765513. Even you can get the recorded classes also. So try to join this and we are also providing the mentorship and even mains answer rating of ethics is also included here. So this is for one month only for one month we are going to complete entire GS4 and I can say that you will score around 130 to 160 marks in your ethics for sure it is my promise. So don't miss this opportunity to try to join this course and you can text me on whatsapp or telegram or you can directly call me on this number and I will be addressing your issues. Okay, and one more thing here is if you want to get the notes of this class, you can join the telegram channel. So, this is a telegram channel that is Rathod's IS classes. Okay, so here if you join this, you can get the class notes and this is our ethics live course uh, group. So, there we are sharing the notes and even the recorded classes link is there here. Okay, so that you can watch them. So, please do join that. And next one here is this is our YouTube channel Rathor's IS Academy. So please do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever we are posting the video you will be getting the notification. Okay and if you want to watch the demo videos of ethics class so this is the one class that is second class it is about impediments and this first class it is about the introduction to ethics and human interface. So these two are the demo classes you can watch them. And this is our website, Rathod's IS Academy website. Okay, so if you are visiting to our website for the first time, so please do register with our website and do login. And later on, you can click on this course list so that you can see which are the wide range of courses that we are offering in this Rathod's IS Academy. Okay, if you want to watch the demo videos, you can click on play course so that the three demo videos will be open without paying a single penny. And we are also going to come up with the prelims booster course that is going to be started from the December 1st week onwards. So there are the four faculty, okay, four faculty people, they are taking the live classes and along with the detailed schedule like what you have to read and that schedule it is planned like, so within your mains, so within your uh, May, okay, by the month of May, you will be having at least three times of revision of each and every subject and important topics will be dealt by the faculty there are four faculty who are dealing with this course so try to join that course so if you want to join that prelims booster course and if you want to get the schedule of that prelims booster course so please contact me on the number that number is 8074765513 so this is whatsapp number and you can call me and you can talk to me regarding this prelims booster course and try to maximize your score and you can clear the prelims easy okay so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this class if you really like this class hit the like button and don't forget to share this class to your friends also and please do subscribe to rathor's is academy thank you so much for watching